לא יכולים לקרוא לו איש מרס נפשך, אני מוציא את זה רבי יחד מעטו, ויד אוי לו, ובכן זה גיפט צדקה. תפילה, צדקה, תאירה in the form of a story, let me share with you one for this week. This week's parsha, Noyach, the story with the flood, we've spoken a lot about it. The time, the extent of time the flood lasted, says the actual rain, 40 days and 40 nights. says the Torah. Now this is not an accidental number. It's a very precise number. And it's related to flood, to water, to purity. Because what was the flood all about? The, water, the flood was the, dev, the excuse me, the, the marble was about purifying the corrupt world which was at the state that it was in. God said, I need to completely, completely cleanse it. And a new pure world came out after that. The number 40 corresponds to mikveh. Mikveh, which is the path in which one immerses him or herself when they need to be purified from a state of impurity to a state of purity. The minimum amount of natural water, rainwater or spring water, well water, is 40 sa'a, that's a Talmudic measurement, approximately 14 liters per sa'a. But the number is 40. 40 represents that transition from one state of being to another state of being, from a state of impurity to a state of purity. So that's the part of this week talking about the rainwater of purifying. 1986, Eastern Europe, Russia particularly, on the harsh communist regime. No let up on the Jewish people who are budding, starting to become a little bit more involved, the refuseniks and so on. The Rebbe's office of Ezra's Achim, Ezra's Achim, which means helping our brothers, that was the branch devoted entirely to looking after the needs of Russian Jewry. One of their programs were that they would send the Rebbe through this office would send shluchim emissaries, clandestine trips, a week, two weeks, as tourists, visitors, and at that time bring all the religious objects and teach and connect. And uh, that was the lifeline, so to say, from the Rebbe to the, sh- to the Russian Jews and back. So in 1986, I had a, I had a merit to be chosen to go for a two week trip together with my brother-in-law, Rabbi Gershon Grosbom, world famous for his expertise in building mikvahs. He has built them literally, literally all over the world. And then the purpose of that trip was for him to render the mikveh in the Marina Russia, the old, only little shul that was functioning, uh, and make sure that the mikveh over there is kosher. Clandestine trip. My part was giving classes, bringing the meeting with people, and so on. I'm not a mikveh expert, to say the least. Two weeks, he's, build a, he's busy with this, mainly. Sunday night, before departing, there's a fabreng and a gathering of about 20, 25, mainly refuseniks, uh, which in itself was a, an illegal activity, meeting with foreigners. And there is a chsilisha for bringing a goodbye party for the shlochim and asking brachas, blessings from the Rebbe, conveying blessings which we had to memorize and so on. The fabrenge started without Gershon because Gershon still had to do some final touches. The fabrenge started in the middle of the fabrenge. Gershon comes in and he says, Friends, I have a tremendous good news. Baruch Hashem, the mikveh is finalized. It's 100% kosher. What an eruption of happiness. Started dancing. The fellas literally forgot they were oblivious to what's happening. The neighbors will hear. They're dancing from Simcha, from joy, they have a kosher mikveh. But then, Krisha Rosenstein, who is an elder leader of this whole movement, he's one of the, considered the shliach of the Rebbe, him together with Rabbi Getsch, he gets up and says, we have a problem. A mikveh without water is useless. Now this is June, July, beautiful weather, no rain. So he gets up, puts on his gout and his capote and his hat and says, I want to give a bracha. The bracha is what? 
the Abishta should help, God should help, it should start raining, and the mikveh should be filled with kosher, proper water, so we should be able to use it. I'm thinking that's the only thing he's concerned about. His life is in danger. Just two weeks prior to this, he was picked up by one of the KGB cars and beat in the middle of the street. Believe it or not, suddenly a downpour of rain, astonishing, and the mikveh filled up. Forty so, and indeed, it's their commitment, this purity, which brought about the complete transformation of Eastern Europe, which is today ready to welcome Mashiach. Good Shabbos.